Okay, it's Roger Spur, and I am going to be talking about electron flood theory and about electrons in particular. Now, everybody knows basically what electrons do. They make electricity, and they say you can get them on your body walking through the air. You can collect them on you and discharge them to ground by a water pipe or something and snap, or you feel that little spark. That's static electricity and electricity is electrons so we know that these electrons are floating around and they can collect on you they can come through the air as lightning they flow through wires as electricity and they also hit solar panels and make electrons flow so we know the electrons are involved in light there's no way to deny that the electrons come down as light and displace other electrons in the solar panel and force them down into storage. Now, let's look at what particle physics is all about. Because I can show you these electrons, I can show you the muons, and I believe I can show you these W and Z bosons, and if I am right, we can have free electricity. And don't forget, nothing that you're going to see written about the subatomic particles is correct because they don't understand electron flood theory and they don't understand an electron has that positive side which is the muon and is dark matter. Listen to what it says. Generally thought to be an elementary particle because they have no known components or substructure. So it's just an electron they think which is just a negative nothing. The electron has a mass approximately 1836 of the proton. Anyway, and it goes on about that. So here's our electron. Now let me show you an electron, and I will show you electron actually separate, because electrons, two of them, make a photon. Now the whole idea of particle physics is the irreducibility in the smallest detectable particles and the fundamental interactions necessary to explain their behavior. Why do they do what they do and how small can we see and what are they're going to names and what are their their um, attributes. What let's let's remember these names because we're going to they're going to become very important and their values are also going to become very important. Electron, muon and tau. Well then we have electron neutrino same thing but it says neutrino and we have a muon neutrino, same thing it says, but neutrino. And we have a tau, same thing, but it's a neutrino. Then we have the bosons. These are the ones that we really, really want. Because these are like exploding gigantic bombs. They're billions of electron volts. These are in the low millions. These are billions, way, way, way more powerful than these. If we can create from these turn it because they do they they change from these into these and we can do this with the with the venturi experiments we just did i will show you these electron and muons and electron neutrinos and muon neutrinos then i'll show you these bosons the tau and eh, i don't even know if that's that's i think i know where they're talking about but i, I wouldn't give it a name because so it's not a particle these are particles and these are the interaction between these particles coming back together. So really you only have these two particles, electrons and muons. The rest are interaction, but these are energetic interactions. These are actually particles. And I'll show you these particles right now, and then I'll show you how they interact and why they create so much energy. Okay, once again, here they are. The two particles. That's it. Now, this, in this configuration right here, is what we would call an electron. We know, nobody's ever known about that black particle. We know electrons concuss, they explode, they, they vaporize, they get static and all that, but this is always tied together, even when you get static. These two are together. They'll never separate on, until we put them through the Venturi and exploded them, and then they all just went crazy and blew apart. Now this is red. Let me show you some other ones. Hold on. All right, these are green, just much more powerful, but exactly the same particle. You see it? Exactly the same particle, but it's it's um, much stronger. 
It spins much faster, that's all. But it is the same particle, it's just how fast is it spinning when it's going through the, the atmosphere. And um, I don't know if I showed this already, but this is the light, you know, with the particle way back here forcing its way through the air just as it normally would. But then when we put it through the venturi, this part of box of particles exploded into bits. And all it did was explode at the at the venturi and then they came back together out here. So there is only the black and the white. But the white can never be in with it amongst itself. That's what you call energetic energy. And that it's, it comes in as a, a, electron neutrinos and muon neutrinos because they're they're not excited enough to create this kind of energy and then once they create this kind of energy at a venturi and divide now you've got your w and z bosons over here harvest that and we got free energy and I don't see how, why we can't harvest it. I think it would be simple. It would be just like putting some kind of solar panel there, only it's going to be a solar panel on steroids times infinity because you're going to be absorbing energy here that you just, I don't know if you'll ever, ever even be able to use it. And when I say not be able to use it, I mean because there'll be so much of it. Now, they also talk about um, things change in flavors, which the flavor is... Um, the density, uh, well, let's not go into that because there's, there's flavors and then there's colors. The colors don't really have anything necessarily to do with color, but they, they do seem to have something to do with color. Um, flavors are what we were talking about, the neutrinos and the, um, the muons. That's, those are the flavors. The colors are literally, I, they are really colors because they, you see these different colors here? Anyway.